Hi everyone. So in this video, I would like to um, go over a little bit about the uh, fingerprint analysis lab, but I'm going to leave the identification of fingerprints to people who are uh, much more experienced and knowledgeable about it than I am. Um, so I pasted a, a short video uh, link in the in the description below that basically uh, goes to a forensic scientist who very quickly shows how to identify um, fingerprints and there's actually quite a lot to it. Um, I'm going to go over some very basics here um, and then I'm going to talk about the methods that we're going to use to actually visualize the fingerprints and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about what you're actually going to do um, in the lab. So this should be a relatively short video. So if we look at um, these different fingerprints you can clearly see that they have different features and this is right out of the, um, the lab manual. So in this case, um, we have two major features, which are a core, which is kind of the center of the fingerprint, and a delta, where three regions um, come together. And you can see this is kind of a um, whirl type of um, pattern. Uh, we can also see this kind of loop type pattern here, with again a core here, and a delta where multiple regions come together. And then this last one is more of an arch type feature where there aren't really um, cores and deltas uh, to be visualized. So these are three uh, very different types of fingerprints that can be easily identified. Again, in the video description, uh, in the description linked below, uh, you could basically uh, go into this level of detail, but then also into much more detail when you're actually trying to identify um, two fingerprints. So in this case, you're going to have a relatively limited number of fingerprints to use, and we're not going to use any kind of software matching or any of this kind of stuff. Um, so it should be um, probably a little bit more straightforward um, than it might be in some other cases. So how are we actually going to develop these fingerprints? Well, there's uh, a few ways that we're going to do that. And the first way is we're going to use uh, powders or dusting. And we're going to use conventional and fluorescent powders, and we're going to lift the fingerprints with tape. These tend to work on smooth surfaces. Um, so a glass slide, for example, uh, might be a good way to, uh, a good place to use these powders. What I do want to tell you about these powders is they're super messy. They use ultra, ultra fine dusts, and these dusts kind of just physically stick um, to the residue that is uh, left by a fingerprint. And basically, um, you want to be using these things in the hood. They get dust everywhere. You don't want to be really breathing in that dust. It's, you know, it's probably not the most toxic thing in the world, uh, but it does make a big mess. So make sure we're using those in the hood and make sure that um, we're using reasonable amounts of the dust. The next thing we're going to use is iodine. And iodine is volatile and it sublimes. So iodine will go directly from the gas phase, or excuse me, from the solid phase to the gas phase, sublimation. And basically what it can do is it can dissolve in the fatty acids that will be left behind in a fingerprint. And this is kind of a reversible technique. So you can iodine stain a fingerprint and if you leave it for enough time, the iodine will actually then vaporize out of the fingerprint. It's not actually causing any kind of reaction. It's more um, just working with um, by dissolving into the um, fatty acids and iodine is colored so it visualizes the fingerprint. This can work really well on rough surfaces such as uh, a rougher wood or something like that um, and it is reversible so you do need to photograph it quickly but it's also not destructive which can be good. Ninhydrin. Ninhydrin reacts with amino acids. And one thing I want to remind you about ninhydrin is um, your body is full of amino acids. So be careful. You don't want it to react with the amino acids um, in your skin. So in the lab manual, you can actually see the reaction of ninhydrin to form the blue purple colored uh, product. Um, in my experience with this, um, it generally does require a little bit of heating um, to get it to uh, react relatively quickly. Uh, but that said, um, it will work uh, well on porous materials, um, such as paper and things like that, and it can help us to visualize uh, fingerprints. We just need to be careful with it because we don't want to, you know, turn our fingers pink. So we want to wear gloves and not get it all over the place. The next one is uh, silver nitrate, and silver nitrate works uh, like in film, but it can also be worked with uh, working with fingerprints. Uh, it does. It is a destructive technique, uh, so it's often used last as like kind of the last resort type of technique. And essentially, what the silver nitrate does is it precipitates with um, with the chloride ions that would be found in sweat, like from sodium chloride, because silver chloride is insoluble. Upon exposure to light, that will turn into a uh, dark colored residue. Um, basically, leaves a dark silver. Um, 
color onto the different surfaces and it does work well with older fingerprints but basically you're not going to have any older fingerprints in this lab but you are going to learn about this uh, technique and then the last technique is um, the cyanoacrylate, which is essentially just using superglue. And superglue is volatile, and we have a chamber where you can heat up the superglue. That'll put the superglue uh, vapors into the uh, into the air, and then basically they'll kind of stick to the fingerprint, and they'll you they'll leave this white residue. Needless to say, if your fingerprint was on something that was white, it would be hard to see it because white on white, there's no contrast, um, and it's difficult to see. So this could be uh, more useful with darker surfaces, things like that, um, and it's a visualizing technique. So basically what you're going to do is two parts in this lab, and I, uh, I apologize, I don't really have much to show you here, uh, but you're going to do two parts. And the first part is you're going to use each of the six techniques to visualize your own fingerprints or your lab partner's fingerprints, uh, something like that. So you're going to put them on different surfaces and then use the different techniques uh, that we just talked about in order to visualize the fingerprints. In the second section, you're going to identify the sub, uh, suspect's fingerprints. So you will be given a bag of evidence. Obviously, it's not from a real crime. It's kind of mock evidence. And you will try to identify whether the same person has uh, touched those items um, by doing this. Now, when you do this, um, you're going to want to think about, based on your experience of developing your own fingerprints, what type of development method might work best for the surfaces on your evidence in your bag. Um, so just, you know, it may not be the same for all three pieces of evidence. Um, it might be different techniques for different pieces of evidence. So that's basically what you're going to want to think about. Keep in mind efficiency. So if you have two methods that work equally well, but one can be done in one minute and one can be done in 15, you might want to choose the one that can be done uh, more quickly because efficiency does count. All right. And the last thing is um, we just don't want to make a mess. All right. So make sure everything gets uh, cleaned up and things like that. And we're not getting dust everywhere and in hydrogen everywhere um, so that we're not um, causing those types of problems. Finally, what you're going to want to do is uh, potentially photograph uh, the fingerprints and pull them up on a screen so you can blow them up. Uh, we don't really have microscopes available um, in order to uh, visualize them that way. So it may be easier just take a picture with your phone, send the phone over to the computer where you can blow it up. Okay, um, you can use uh, programs uh, where you can actually make dots on them like in the video in the description below if that is helpful. Here again, we're not going to become for, uh, professional uh, fingerprint analyzers in one experiment, but it's more to give you an idea of the different ways in which forensic scientists will develop uh, fingerprints and then spend a little bit of time practicing to analyze them. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope you find this to be a fun lab. It seems like fun to me. I've never actually done um, this as a whole lab, so I think it'd be fun to try this stuff out. All right, thanks for watching.